what's going on fam commanding general yana here had to jump in with you right quick on another horrible horrible day is going down in the empire because it is an extremely evil situation that is uh, unfolding right. there. The EPA grants Oklahoma control over tribal lands. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, has granted the state of Oklahoma regulatory control over environmental issues on nearly all tribal lands there. Ridiculous. This strips from 38 tribes in Oklahoma their sovereignty over environmental issues. It also establishes a legal and administrative pathway to potential environmental abuses on tribal lands, including dumping hazardous chemicals like carcinogens, carcinogenic PCBs, and petroleum, spill, petroleum spills with no legal recourse by the tribes, according to a former high-level official of the EPA. This also includes hazardous chemicals that are byproducts of petroleum procurement and refining. In 2019, Oklahoma had the fourth largest petroleum industry in the U.S. Thieves, man. To harvest this oil, they're going to now steal all of that beautiful land, the little bit that they left, the North American Indians, specifically the tribes that live in Oklahoma. And they specifically eat doing something evil to them because... These tribes in this zone, okay, are the tribes uh, uh, that are associated with the famous Trail of Tears. The Trail of Tears was when the United States in 1830, the United States decided to move these different tribes away off of this land, off of the land that they were in on the eastern side of the country and move them all to the western side, to the west of the Mississippi River. And in doing so, they killed so many of them and destroyed them and uprooted them, but then put them on these reservations and gave them sovereignty, which they've had now for well over a hundred years. And now out of nowhere, they decided because of the fracking and the, the oil they want to steal, natural gas, money, they're going to now turn around and destroy these people over it, which is why the Lord's people got to return to him. In other words, they, these people can't be allowed to control the earth and they won't be because Christ will stop it and destroy it. Okay. His nation is going to rule because they'll have mercy and sensibility when it comes to ruling over these other nations. These people have, they break all their treaties, man. Okay, it says this, uh, uh, the Young Turks have obtained a copy of the letter the EPA Ministry Andrew Wheeler sent to the governor, Kevin Stitt of Oklahoma on October, Republican. The end of the opening paragraph states simply, EPA hereby approves Oklahoma's request, meaning their request to go ahead and take control of the environmental situation. They're gonna turn it into a dumping ground. They're gonna, they're gonna pull all the resources out of the earth dump every chemical on there and they ain't gonna care whether how much they poison these tribes. Once again, 12 lost tribes of the Lord must, I mean, you in danger like you don't even understand. All your treaties and ideas of laws and things that you've always believed were here to protect you. You finding out now in these last days under the Republicans and especially under Trump, you are finding out that you don't have any of that anymore. You finding out that none of that is sacred to them. So they could care less about it. Let me get a little bit more. Here's what it says, okay? After over 500 years of oppression, lies, genocide, ecocide, and broken treaties, we should have expected the EPA, this is the Gadite speaking, okay? We should have expected the EPA ruling in favor of racist governance stit of Oklahoma, yet it still stings.
under the Trump administration, destroying all environmental protection has been ramped up to, to give the fossil fuel industry life support as it takes its last dying breath. Who suffers the results? Everyone and everything. Who benefits? Trump and his cronies. Climate change deniers like Governor Stitt, Senator Inhofe, and Langard, Langford, who are financially supported by big oil and gas. I am convinced that we must fight back against the underhanded ruling in the courts on the front lines and in the international courts. Life itself is at stake, because of course, they're gonna go up in there under big oil and steal some more. You wonder why is there so much poverty and crime in this empire? Because the wealthy steal and steal and steal and steal and don't give anybody a chance to live. And that's the world. It ain't just not just America. It's the entire world. Every empire is doing it. Every country is doing it. Why? Because they're not really ruled by a set of righteous laws. The laws are just made for the poor. For the poor to be chained and handcuffed. Not for the wealthy. Meanwhile, they've used your religions to brainwash you into believing that it is not as evil as it really is. When it is evil as all outdoors, man. And it's historically evil to do this to this group of brothers and sisters because again, these are the um, people who suffered the trail of tears in the 1830s, man. The Cherokee, the Creek, the Choctaw, the Choctaw and the, the, the Chick Chickasaw, I believe I got it. And the Seminole were all marched out of their ancestral lands to Indian territory. The term Trail of Tears refers to the difficult journey that the five tribes took during their forced removal from the Southeast during the 1830s and 1840s, man. Okay. Out of their ancestral lands to Indian territory or present Oklahoma. They pushed them all into Oklahoma. Although the removal of American Indians began long before the 19th century, the Trail of Tears is mostly associated with the forced removals that took place after the 1830 Indian Removal Act. Jackson is the one that backed the Indian Removal Act, which, which removed hundreds of thousands of North American Indians after they had conquered and had the land. Remember now, this is the 1800s. They had the land you know, what, 200 years, 16, 17, 18, they had eight, a good 300 years, pretty much, of the land in control and had the, 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 the uh, North American Indians living wherever they were living at. And then they decided after 300 years, now we're gonna remove them. Now, 2020, they won't, they're going a step further. They had already removed them a hundred years ago. Now they're gonna go in their lands and, you know, steal every resource and poison every bit of their land and run roughshod, okay, over the whole operation of their of these reservations. It's been a nightmare for them. And here's the thing: if you fear the Lord, if you believe there's a God in heaven, then you better also believe that there's a judgment coming for this kind of behavior. There's a judgment coming for this behavior. You can't, you know, you singing in church and you love Jesus while Mexican babies are sitting in cages and you acting like, why are tornadoes coming? Why are fires burning up the whole West Coast? Why does this country have the coronavirus and all the countries around the world? You don't understand? Two plus two makes equals four? You ain't figured it out yet? You haven't figured out that the evil that's being done here is being is generating a response by the hand of the Lord? You should understand that by now. This was this that's what's happening. Let me get a little bit more. Okay. The trail of tears differed for for each of the nations, but all Indians suffered. The marches usually began when federal troops rounded up those who resisted removal. The journeys, usually more than 1000 miles, lasted several weeks.
A shortage of wagons, horses, and food and other supplies made the marches difficult. Some traveled by boat, but the conditions there were usually no better. The U.S. government did not provide enough supplies to sustain the travelers during the during their march and their arrival, which means they didn't even have food, they didn't have clothing, they didn't have blankets. You know what I mean? And of course, did it during the winter time. An exceptional harsh winter plagued the Choctaw, the first nation to face the forced migration, leaving several groups in 1831. More than 14,000 Choctaws left Mississippi. Not they didn't leave; they were forced out. French observers describe one journey as a as a sight that will never fade from my memory. He noted that the snow was hard on the ground and huge masses of ice differed on the rip, drifted on the river. The Indians brought their families with them. There were among them the wounded, the sick, newborn babies, and old men on the point of death. They had neither tents, imagine this, in Oklahoma, y'all, in the Midwest, all them states they love so much that they got so much pride for, Tennessee, uh, uh, you know, Oklahoma, all those different Midwest states, Kentucky, all these different states. They've been doing this, man. This is their history. And for black people and Latino people to think that they would be any different now is ridiculous. You should, so you should find out your identity. You should really find out your identity before they took over this place and, and, and then begin to look at things a whole lot differently. Let me get a little bit more. For other Indians, disease and malnutrition proved equally devastating, man. Man. After losing the Creek War of 36 and 37 with the United States, more than 14,500 Creek Indians faced the additional indignation of being forced to leave their lands and forced to march west. Often in chains, several hundred Creeks died during the journey and approximately 3,200 died from disease malnutrition and exposure after their arrival in Indian territory, meaning they got to the territory and had nothing, had no shelter, had no clothing, had no food. Disease also took a toll on the Choctaw, which you know by many of you know that, you know, diseased blankets was given to them during these, these, uh, these, uh, you know, marches, these thousand uh, uh, mile marches. Imagine walking a thousand miles, a thousand miles that's like a third across this country one third the length of this country they had to do go by foot it took months all in bad weather no food no blankets iced up rivers walking on ice for months killed thousands of them tens of thousands of them okay it says this for other indians disease and malnutrition proved equally devastating after losing the, the Creek War, 30, 1836, 1837 with the United States, more than 14,500 Creek Indians faced additional indignation of being forced to leave their lands and forced to march west, often in chains. Some of them was chained up and having to take this journey. You know how they must have died. Several hundred Creeks died during the journey and approximately 3,200 died from disease, malnutrition, and exposure after their arrival in the Indian Territory. Disease also took a toll on the Chick Ch Chickasaw, who lost more than 500 men, women, and children to smallpox. That was, oof. They put plagues out in this world and it's all coming back now. This is judgment time by the hand of the Lord. You can't do evil in the world and get away with it. Certainly black people have not. All the crimes that black people have committed in the past under the Lord, uh, we, we've paid for, for it in the, ha in the wake of 400 years, man, 400 and plus years. <laughs> Here's what it says. The, the Cherokee experience was perhaps the most severe. As many as one out of, uh, of every four Cherokee died because of the, their westward journey. One out of four of them died on that route, on that journey, man. One out of four lost their lives, okay? And Andrew Jackson, he was the one that was, that was about this removal. They came to take over the territory, man. They pushed tons of so-called Indians off their land, including 
you know, the ones that they're getting ready to go in there now and devastate. They're getting ready to go in there and devastate their land. Let me get you a little bit more if I could. It says, estimates based on tribal and military records suggest that approximately 100,000 indigenous people were forced from their homes. I got news for you, it was a whole lot more. From their homes during that period, which is sometimes known as the removal era. And that some 15,000 died during the journey west. The term trail of tears invokes the collective suffering those people experienced. Let me tell you something. It was so wise of them to coin that term trail of tears because this type of stuff should never be forgotten, especially in 2020, when they gonna now go to these people who they've destroyed and devastated their lives and taken over their land, built their empire pretty much on top of their head. And now they're gonna go in and completely wipe them out. And if they're willing to do that to the people who they did the most heinous or some of the most heinous crimes to, don't tell me to listen to your preacher in church. Don't tell me to listen to him and believe that what he's saying is all right and fine and that black people are not in any danger. These people will wake up tomorrow and come up with another law, regulation, or rule and do it. This was shot down at one time as well. This was shot down because uh, during the, in 2005, during George Bush, George Bush tried to do this exact same thing. He tried to pass this law and go in, he tried to go in there and, you know, set the EPA over it so that he could steal everything. They turned around and went to court and fought them on it. The problem is they came back and changed the whole legislation. And now that the legislation has changed, it opened the door for them to go in there and rob and steal. And that's all this is. This is all this is. So many lives in this empire were lost and abused and and maligned and destroyed simply to make a small group of people more wealthy than they already were. And, and that's not humanity. And it is why the judgment of the Lord is, should be so precious to every black person every latino every native indian the lord's judgment should be precious to you precious in this respect you've suffered because you broke god's law statutes and commandments you at one time were supposed to be keeping these laws statutes and commandments you broke them and look at the devastating punishment you suffered and now that you suffered that devastating punishment and it, and those that inflicted that punishment have gone beyond the realm that they were supposed to go in that punishment, now they have to be punished. And it is only that judgment that balances out the lives, the lives of all humans on this planet. But that judgment is coming and it, part of it is the coronavirus. Get ready for an amazing show of God's power, man. Get ready for an amazing show of what he could do all over the world when he's angry with the things that the earth and the people on the earth are doing specifically and especially to the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. You could think what you want to think, but the Seminole Indians who suffered this are one of the 12 lost tribes of the children of Israel. They were coming over here since the days of Joseph in Egypt. They came over here after the Assyrian empire. Go check the history. It's all in the Bible. And those are the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel that come, come out of the land. And let me tell you something. They've, they've tried to shame this knowledge and say that it's a, a conspiracy theory, but it is coming out and will be coming out of the walls and it will be brought forth in everybody's face. And when it does, when it does, you'll see so much more of the world change because you'll then begin to understand why they are so evil and racist against you and why they can't help themselves because they know at the end of this there will never be another nation that rules this earth again except those 12 tribes under christ under the father in heaven that's the future and they know it in their soul and they fear it in their soul michelle obama made a speech where she said she, she uh, referenced those who fear revenge and retribution for what they did in slavery, hold on to their racism. I'm paraphrasing. And she was right on that part. She was, I was not for what, of course, what she was saying, but she was so right on that in that she even had to expose how 
They got a white supremacist and a racist in the White House supporting them. And after all that has happened to the Lord's chosen people, they still stay on it out of fear that the day will come, that they will have to pay for all this. And the sad thing is, in Christ's day, you got to pay for all of this. Scriptures say, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. I'm coming to that in a second. Let me read a little bit more of this, okay, real quick. Okay, the physical trail consisted of several overland routes and one main water route, and by passage of the Omnibus Public Lands Management Act in 2009, stretched some 5,000 miles across portions of nine states. Boy, oh boy, they're gonna take over nine states and push all the Gadites into absolute hell. I mean, all the Seminole Indians into absolute hell. Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Illinois, Kentucky, Missouri, North Carolina, Oklahoma, and Tennessee. They restructuring this empire, preparing for the new age. But that new age is gonna come with global thermonuclear war from all sides of the world. From all sides of the world. Check out what the Encyclopedia Britannica says. It said the roots of forced relocation lay in greed. It's all about, it was all about money, that's all. People, tens of thousands of people gotta die for a small group to get richer. There's enough wealth to feed, you know, nations onto millennia. The British Proclamation of 1763 designated the region between Appalachian Mountains and Mississippi River as Indian Territory. Although that region was to be protected for the exclusive use of indigenous peoples, large numbers of Euro-American land speculators and settlers soon entered. For the most part, the British and later U.S. governments ignored these acts of trespass. They just said, the hell with it. Take all the land you want. Take whatever the hell you want to take. In 1829, a gold rush occurred on Cherokee land in Georgia. Check this out, y'all. Vast amounts of wealth were at stake. At their peak, Georgia mines produced approximately 300 ounces of gold a day. Land speculators soon demanded that the U.S. Congress devolve the, uh, uh, devolve to the states the control over real property owned by tribes and their members. That position was su supported by President Andrew Jackson, who was himself an avid speculator. Congress complied by passing the Indian Removal Act of 1830. The act entitled the president to negotiate with the Eastern nations to affect their removal to track of land to tracts of land west of the Mississippi and provided some half a million dollars for transportation and for compensation to native landowners. Meaning he supposedly set it up. Half a million dollars was nothing compared to the amount of people that had to be moved. We just read how they starved the brothers and sisters to death. Old, young babies, they, they could care less. It's all about gobbling up and being greedy for the earth. When you could be rich on the earth by just spreading the wealth, it would automatically come back to you. But only a human being would understand that. An animal wouldn't understand that. An animal only understands how to eat. An animal doesn't understand how to, you know, organize something that everybody eat. You know what I mean? That's left to humans, okay? The act entitled the president to negotiate with the Eastern nations, okay? Jackson reiterated his support for an act in various messages to Congress, notably on Indian removal. 1830, a permanent habitation for the American Indians, 1835, which illuminated his political justifications for removal and described some of the outcome he expected would derive from the relocation process. He already knew he was gonna kill him. Indi indigenous reactions to the Indian Removal Act vary. The, so the Southeast Indians were for the most part tightly organized and heavily invested in agriculture. The farms of the most populous tribe, the Choctaw, Crete, Chickasaw, Seminole, and Cherokee were particularly coveted by outsiders because they were located in prime agricultural areas and were very well developed. 
They had developed these lands over years and years and years. And all they wanted to do is steal it from them. Thieves. And that's why, you know, you want me to come to church and love everybody and act like Jesus is just, you know, going to come and love everybody when these people are operating like monsters on this planet. You know what I'm saying? This place, this, this planet is like this, just like the scripture said, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof, Job 9, 24. It's in the hand of the wicked, not in the hand of the righteous. Scripture says this, when the righteous bear rule, the people are saved or delivered. When righteous people rule, people live wonderfully in the earth. You wondering what the hell is going on out there? Evil is ruling this earth. That's what's going on right there, man. And it says he covered the faces of the judges thereof. The judges are the priests and prophets of the children of Israel, whom you covered up and made to be Caucasians, made to be Edomites, when they were in fact black, Latino, natives. Let me get a little bit more. This meant that the speculators who purchased such properties could immediately turn a profit. That's what they knew. They knew if they could get to their hands on the land, they wouldn't have to worry about cultivating it over years and growing it over years. That's what they're doing in the South now. All those families that had land in the South, they're going in and taking them to court, finding somebody with one sliver of the land, suing them to, and forcing them to sell the land and then turning it into millions of dollars of agriculture. It's, a, it's been going on for years, which is again, make no mistake, there's an end to all of this. There's an end to all of this and there's a paradise that comes afterward. And the sad part is the end to this means a lot of people on this earth they're going to be destroyed by the hand of the lord that's what it means let me read on thus okay let me get this right this meant that the speculators who purchased such properties could immediately turn a profit fields had already been clear pastures fenced barns and houses built and the like thus the southeast tribes approached federal negotiations with the goal of either reimbursement for or protection of their members investments remember now they had land houses pastures all set up they took them off of all that land marched them a thousand miles by foot and by boat and put them on another piece of land that was totally undeveloped and left them to die. They barely survived. They barely survived on that land. This is the monstrosity. This is the real world. You hear from me ain't pretty and nice, but it's the real world. And, and it's about time you start seeking out the real world. Because you've been living in fantasy land too damn long. This is the real world. This is what really happened in this world. They removed these people, man, from their land that they built and set up and whom they negotiated with after coming to steal the whole country. And now in 2020, they turned around again and the EPA passed the law and now they're going to steal more from them again. And you think there's going to be all this equality and love and, and God fearing nation and we can do better and blah, 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 and blah, bull BS. You ain't fooling me with that garbage. I fool them idiots sitting in church every Sunday believing a damn lie, but you ain't fooling me with it. That's for sure. Here's the Psalms, I'm sorry, 55 and 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Man, this man's words are sweet like butter. Scripture said the serpent is the most subtile beast of the field. Subtile means to be cool and, and unassuming and appear undangerous and to be undetected. Something subtle is undetected. Okay, and it's why, like the Lord likens all the nations to different characters. The Lord uh, likened the tribe of Judah to a lion. That's his character. Why black people can be loud sometimes and, you know what I'm saying, and boisterous. And it's also why they're the greatest fighters. Every tribe has their character. Every nation on earth. When it comes to Edomites, 
the Lord gave him the character of a snake. He moves slow and quietly and in the background and unassuming and appears innocent until he bites you. When he bites you, it's too late. You got the poison in you. That's his character. Okay, so his words are smoother than butter. But war is in his heart. That's what's in his heart. You don't realize what's in his heart is overthrowing you. When you see them coming into the, your neighborhood and gentrifying your neighborhood, you think it's a good thing. Oh, they coming in the neighborhoods getting more integrated. They buying up the real, they smiling and planting trees and, you know, and opening cappuccinos, you know, little um, coffee houses and little uh, natural vegan shops. And you think, oh, the neighborhood is coming up. War is in his heart. While he's doing that, it was in his heart, get them the hell out of here. Take over them black neighbors. That's what they did to Harlem. They want to change it from Harlem to uh, not Soho, because they got Soho, but I think they called it Hoso or something like that. I forget the term. Y'all know it out there. They change, they want to change the name. They want to get rid of Harlem. They got rid of every black club there were historical black clubs in Harlem. The ones you see in the old historical jazz movies, they got rid of every last one of them in Harlem. They don't even exist no more. Maybe one or two, maybe. They got wiped them out. That's what they do. They've done it all over the country and they continue to do it. And they are doing it now to the North American Indians. They've been doing it, which is why this judgment will be so horrific. This judgment is gonna be like nothing you never saw before. And you ain't gonna understand it because you think God is an all loving God. You don't believe that God hands out judgment. You think God is just all love. Well, you don't know the Bible. You have no clue of the Bible. The Lord said he sitteth in the judgment seat. You know what I mean? He's the one that's calling the shots. And then when he calls them, they write shots. The problem is you done did so much wrong, he's coming for you coming for you here's what it says this is psalms 55 22 cast thy burden upon the lord and he shall sustain you you putting your trust in another nation is a mistake he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved he's the one who'll stop you from being removed from your place wiped out as a people but you trusting in you know voting and trusting in lies and trusting in the religions that come from your slave masters you trust you a baptist when the baptists in america were established by the clan that's who you trusted you trusted what they taught you was righteous and of god when those were the people that were slaughtering you with white hoods on their head i don't get it i don't get it maybe it's just me i don't get it Here's what the Lord said, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 32 and 8. When the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, he gave every nation an inheritance. Every single nation on this earth has their own land. Every one of them. They just left their lands and overthrew everybody else's land. That's why the Lord said when Christ returns and the nation is set up, he said that nations shall learn war no more because the whole point of war is to steal somebody else's land. Don't have nobody fool you into believing it's anything other than that. Every war and conflict you ever saw was just about stealing. That's all it is. It ain't no different. War is no different than robbery. Now, in some cases, just like in a robbery, when somebody come to rob you, sometimes the robber ends up getting destroyed. Sometimes the victim gets the upper hand on the robber. Sometimes the victim will pull out a gun and bust a cap in the robber. And now the robber gets killed instead of the victim. And that's the same with war. Sometimes one nation like Saddam Hussein did it. He went in there and invaded Kuwait. He went in there to steal their land and oil. And the US turned around and went and invaded him and stole his land and oil and gave the Kuwaitis back their land. Every war is about stealing. World War I, World War II, Korean conflict, Vietnam, Desert Storm. All of them was about stealing. The Falcon Wars with the British. 
the civil right, the uh, 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 civil war in America, the war of independence, all about stealing, robbing, and that's why the Lord gonna change the world because that's unsustainable. Which is also why we're gonna end up like the Bible prophesies in global thermonuclear war. When the Most High, Deuteronomy 32 and 8, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, meaning when Adam's uh, 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 sons got separated into their own parts, everybody had their own land. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel, meaning he first gave the children of Israel their boundaries, their land, the land of Israel that belongs to the 12 lost tribes of Israel. And then from there, he went and started giving out all the other tribes their land. And he had plenty of land left over, which is why you have 12 tribes, some of the tribes over here, because they have been coming over here long after everybody had their portion of land. They came over here and got even more land. And which is why the earth got to be put back in order because thieves will rob until there's like the scripture said in, Ob in Obadiah, if thieves came to thee at night, if robbers, would they have not left some grapes? I'm paraphrasing. Meaning when a thief come, he rob, he take all the valuables and he leave out. A thief don't come to your house, back up a U-Haul truck and take every single thing, even the wallpaper off the walls. He don't even take the things that are of no value. He takes the things that are of value. But the Lord said that this man, these nations, these Edomites, all of these nations, that they are like a thief that steals till there's nothing left. Long past how much they need to have enough. This empire has way more than it needs to have enough. It's just so busy stealing and not sharing that it seems like they can't get enough. But the Most High gonna give the whole earth enough. He gonna shut it all the way down. And you gonna be living in a different world under a different authority than you've ever believed that you would be under. I'll get you on the next one, fam. Shalom. I want you to stay strong in the spirit of the Lord. Hey, listen, if you like this tape, hit the like button and share it, man. Hit the share button. Sh everybody share it to their own personal Facebook account. Share this video, man, to wake up brothers and sisters all over this earth. Hit the like button. Check me out Monday night. I'm live every Monday night. I bring the heavy hitters in. We do it up live right on this same channel. I'll see you then.